Hallelujah. Well, the Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the people be glad that our God reigns. And this morning we can truly say that the Lord reigneth. He is alive and well this morning, and he's right there with us. The mere fact that we are here in the land of the living is because the Lord reigneth this morning. He caused the sun to shine. He caused the rain to, ra to fall. He caused the fresh breeze to blow. And this morning, we are glad this morning that God is alive and well in our lives. So wherever you are this morning viewing us, we want to say welcome to you to the Water and River Pentecostal Church. And we are here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. And we just want you to join with us wherever you are. And let's worship God in the beauty of his holiness. This is a wonderful day to give the Lord praise. Amen. You might not see tomorrow. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we must rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise this morning for your presence that is in our midst. We thank you, O oh God, that you are here this morning. Your presence, Father, has, has, has been with us, O oh God, and we can praise you. We can lift you up. We can worship you. We thank you, O oh God, for all the things uh, that you have done for us this morning. We cannot give you praise enough, my God, because you have been faithful to us even when we are unfaithful to you, Father. You remain faithful to us. Your mercies are with us every day, Father God. Your goodness are with us all the time. And this morning, we thank you for God. We thank you. Right now, we welcome your presence in this place today, oh God, as your people come to lift you up, to worship you, oh God. May we bask in your presence, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit, my Father, be in our midst. Saturate this place, Father, with your anointing. Let every yoke in this place be broken and let revival come. Let deliverance come. Let, let, let freedom come to your people, Father. Those who are, who are viewing us this morning, oh God, we pray that you will reach out and minister to them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever their needs are, today, Lord, you shall meet the needs, my God. We thank you, oh God, for the power of your anointing, Lord, in this place that will break every yoke, oh God. And as your, as your people worship you, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we declare that your kingdom come and your will be done in this place, Father. Lord God, as your worship team come to lead us into worship, we pray that like never before, your anointing will rest upon them, Lord God, as they lead us in worship, my God, there shall be a glory that shall fill this place, my God. Your anointing shall descend upon us, my God, and destroy every yoke, my God. We pray that there will be melody in our worship, Lord. There will be the anointing, my God, that will make the difference today, Father. In Jesus' name, let your anointing rest upon our worship team this morning as they minister, that they will minister, oh God, like never before. In Jesus' name, let your anointing be upon them today, Father. In the name of Jesus, glorify yourself. Glorify yourself in this place today, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Everybody lift your hands wherever you are this morning. Lift your hands and give God praise. Father, we exalt you. We declare that you are God. We declare that you reign this morning, Father. You are highly exalted, Lord, above all name. You are highly exalted above all power, all authority, all dominion, Father. Above all throne you are. Hallelujah. Every name must bow before you, O God, and every tongue will confess. Uh, we'll lift you up, Lord God. Your name is exalted. The Lord reigns, and let the people be glad because you reign. Hallelujah. We give you praise. And at this moment, we want to make welcome our worship team as they come to lead us in worship in Jesus' name. Be glorified in this place today, Lord. Be exalted in Jesus' name. Somebody give him praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we will give you praise and glory. Somebody give him praise. 
praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. His word says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he hath no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Therefore our soul will bless you today, Father. Our soul will glorify you today. Our soul will magnify you today. Hallelujah. The God that satisfies our mouth with good things. We bless his name today and we exalt the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are here to celebrate Jesus and bless and magnify his name and those of you viewing with us through the internet. We encourage you this morning to worship with us today to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. We will magnify the name of our King today. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I will praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your grace on my life. Hallelujah. For his grace is upon us. And we bless him this morning. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord. You are worthy. Blessed be his name. We give him worship today, Lord. Hallelujah. Give you thanks, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I thanks like a wing of man. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I
I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. Jesus. I'm an overcomer in the name of Jesus. For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Therefore, we are winners today in the name of Jesus. So when you see me dance, when you see me dance, I dance like a winner. I'm a winner today because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. By his stripes we have been made whole. We have been healed. Hallelujah. By his blood we have been washed clean. Glory be to God. And we have been made winners. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you today that we are winners. That we are overcomers. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. And we can boast. Hallelujah. In spite of our circumstances and say today, Lord, hallelujah, that your love never fails us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, the precious God you are. And we bless you this day. Hallelujah. And here we are to give you the worship, to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name, hallelujah, of our winner man, Jesus Christ. Father, we honor you today. We magnify your name. You are worthy of all the praise. Oh, we worship you with grateful hearts. We give you praise. Oh, God, you're worthy. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. We magnify the name of the Lord who reigns forevermore. We bless you, Jesus. Here I am before you, falling in love and seeking your truth, knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place. Because of you, I freely live my life to you. To share, to share this love across the earth, the beauty of your holy word. So I kneel before you, God. I lift my hands because you set me free. Somebody say, so I shout out your name from the rooftops out.
place, God, of families into your hands, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. All that concerns us, we place into your hands, Jesus. All that I am, I place into the hands of the King of Kings today. But you say, cast every care upon you. Cast all our concerns upon you. So, Father, we cast them on you today. And we place our lives and all our cares into your loving arms, Jesus. Oh, we just rest in the arms of Jesus. We just rest in the arms of our Savior. Where there is peace, where there is joy, hallelujah. Where we are set free from the cares of this life, Lord. We just rest in you, Father. Oh, we give you the glory. All that we are, all our problems, Lord, all our troubles, Lord, we place into your loving arms today. Oh, I encourage you today, place all that you are into his loving arms, for he never fails. Glory be to God. We give you worship, Jesus. Sing it again. Who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me in. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Whom the sun sets free. Oh,
I'm chosen, not forsaken. Glory be to God. I'm a privileged child of God. Hallelujah. The apple of his eye. He chose us and brought us into his kingdom and made us into kings and into princes. Hallelujah. Into priests. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He has washed us and cleansed us in his blood and made us holy and called us righteous. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. And we hallow his name today. And we say our God is holy. Our God is holy. Our God is holy. Our God is holy. For he has set us free. Free to worship him. Free to praise him. Free to exalt him. Free to magnify him. Oh Lord. You are so holy. We bless your name. We glorify your name. We exalt you, Lord. And we bless your mighty. Hallelujah. What a privilege to be in your presence today, Lord. To magnify you. To honor you to worship you to celebrate and dance before you for singing is a joy unto the lord hallelujah and we count it a privilege to sing you to you to worship you lord oh we give you all the praise lord we bless your holy name and we sing today It's a privilege to worship you, maker of all universe. Hallelujah. It's an honor just to stand before you, holy. Let's sing it one more time. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, holy, holy. It's a privilege. Oh, just to worship. Just to take our time and give you glory. Just to take our time and bless your name. It's an honor just to Proclaiming, Lord, you reign. 
Tell him today, great are you, Lord, the master of our universe, oh, a loving Savior and our King, great. to be prayed, great and greatly to be worshipped, great 
and greatly to be lifted up, greater than every other God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Oh, we worship him today. We worship him today. Oh, just give him a wave offering this morning. Wherever you are, just wave unto the great and mighty God, the great and awesome God. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. Blessed be his name. Worship and honor be unto his name. We ascribe all the glory to him, all the worship to our God. For he's great in all the earth. And we bless his name. And we give him glory and we give him honor. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. Praise the Lord. At this moment, it's my pleasure to welcome our speaker for this morning. So put your hands together and help me welcome Minister Katie Valerie as she comes to minister the word of God this morning. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to talk to us on the topic, it's time to move. It's time to move. I don't know where you are, where you are packed, where you have stopped, where you are located, but it's time to move. Have you ever considered who you were, who you are, and who you want to be? Have you ever considered where you are, where you were, and where you hope or want to be? Have you considered where you were, who you were, where you are, who you are now, and who you want to be? Are you satisfied with who you are this morning? Are we satisfied with who we are this morning? These are some very important questions we need to consider as children of God. If we want to advance and to make progress in our walk with God and in our life in general, we must consider those questions. Who you were, who you are now, who you want to be, where you were, where you are, and where you want to be. Are you where you want to be this morning? Are you who you really want to be, desire to be this morning as children of God? Let us turn our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7, and we're going to read from verse 1 to 16. 2 Kings chapter 7. Okay, from verse 1. We're going to read up till verse 17. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, now, therefore, come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight and go into the camp of the Syrians. 
And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Samaria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the hosts of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and the asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went to one tent and did eat and drink, and carried then silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Verse 9, then they said unto one to another, we do not well. This day is the day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, we came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of a man, but horses tied and asses tied, and the tents as they were. Verse 11, and he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry, therefore they gone out to the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city, Behold, they are as the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. And let us send and see. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. Verse 16, And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate, and the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died, as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came to him. It's time to move. There must be something within us to stir us up, to develop a passion, and to motivate us to be successful, both spiritually and naturally. There must be something within you to give you a passion for you to succeed. If you're a young person, and you are in school, and you don't have a passion for learning, there must be something to motivate you that you would want to learn. You must have something, there must be something that you want to achieve to motivate you. If you are a believer, there must be something in your spiritual life to motivate you to get involved in the things of God, to get involved in witnessing and telling people about God. There must be within us something urging us, motivating us, 
giving us the passion and the excitement to achieve that thing which we need to achieve. But in order to achieve it, we must move. We cannot stay the same place. You cannot remain in primary school all the days of your life and expect to become a doctor. You must move. You must advance. You must make strides. You must make progress. Spiritually, we cannot stay in the same place. You cannot be the same place you were when you got converted five years ago. Today, five years later, there must be growth. There must be change. There must be development. There must be maturity in your life. You cannot remain in the same place. It's time to move. You have to want that thing. You have to want to develop in God. You have to want to grow in God. You have to want to move forward or else you're gonna remain in the same place. You're not going to move ahead unless there is, there is a desire deep down inside of you. There must be a great desire for that thing, for you to achieve it. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, you must have that great desire that I am going to go to school, go to high school. I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to go to university, and I'm going to achieve my master's, my doctorate, whatever it is. There must be that drive within you. Young people, it's not just going to come. You cannot just sit and say, oh, I would like to be a doctor, and just think that, well, you're going to take up your thesoscope and go and operate on people. It doesn't come that way. You have to move. You have to keep moving from one level to the next level. And it doesn't just come by just sitting there. You have to work. Circumstances, the circumstances that we are faced with at times cause us to wonder, does God even care about me because I've been in that situation, in that location, in that thing for so long? Does he care about my problems? I'm sure some of us are asking that. I've been praying so long. I've been going to church for so long. But yet still, that problem doesn't seem to, 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 to resolve. I am faced with that problem year after year, month after year, and it's not moving. But the thing is just so difficult, we think. Am I ever going to get past that point? You may be in school. There may be a subject that is just Giving you a hard time, especially maths. Most of us, that's, our, that's our, our real hard thing to conquer. Do you think you are just going to get over it like that? No, you have to work. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the, the midnight oil. You have to burn hours working out and calculating that you would achieve your goal, achieve your answers. It's like that with the situation we are faced with. We have to keep persevering. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep moving. We cannot remain stagnant. We cannot stay in the same place doing the same thing and expect to get different results. We have to strategize. If you try this and it didn't work, you cannot try the same thing again and expect it to work. You have to try something else. We have to keep moving. The thing might be difficult, so difficult, and you feel like you are in a dungeon. How are you going to get out of that dungeon? Because it's like the earth is about to cover you because you are down there and you have to find a way. If, if you know what a well is, a well is, is like when you get into a well, it's very difficult to get out of a well unless there's somebody to throw in a rope and try to pull you. You may feel like you are down in that dungeon this morning. You have to seek God. You have to call on God. You have to persevere. You cannot give up. You cannot go weary. You have to find a way to push forward. And what will help you to push forward is to kick in your faith. You must kick in your faith. Your faith must kick in. And you must know and come to realize that we can't make it on our own. We need to trust God. 
We need to put our confidence in God this morning. We need to put our hope in God this morning. Don't trust man. Don't put your confidence in man because man will fail you. They'll be there with you today. But when you are in trouble, they will turn their backs on you. Young people, look at the friends that you keep. Mind the companies that you keep. Because they'll be there with you like the, 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 the prodigal son when he had all his riches. And he had money to spend. He had many friends. But when all his money was done, he was left alone to fight his battle. Be careful who you keep as your company, young men and young women in here, young people. When you are down there and you need somebody to help pull you out, they will not be there. You will be screaming out in that well, in that dong john down there, and they will not be anywhere to be found because all the pleasure that you had, all the money that you had, all the good times that you had is now over. And you are left on your own to struggle. Consider the companies that you keep as young people. In Psalms chapter 18 and verse 6, David said, In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice out of his temple. In your distress is not the time to give up. In your distress is not the time to quit. In your distress is the time to move. Is the time to get in action. Is the time to pray. Is the time to supplicate. Is the time to intercede. Is the time to read God's word. Is the time to listen to God's word. Is the time to, to mingle yourself with people who will encourage you in God. Not people who would tear you down and bring you down, but those who would say, come, let us pray about that. We believe in a God, in a big, in a great, in a mighty God who know who is able to move mountains. One who is able to pack the Red Sea. What is the situation in our lives today that God cannot change, that God cannot touch? It's not time to give in. It's not time to cave in. It's not time to be discouraged, but it's time to move, people. It's time to move. We need to keep moving forward. And unless we trust God and allow him to take hold of the situation and to do what he has promised in his word, we remain in the same position. We remain in the same location if we don't allow God to take control. Submit ourselves to God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In your circumstance, in your situation, in the dungeon where you may be, you may be crying out, screaming out in, in secret. And none of us know what you are going through. But there's somebody who knows. God knows about you. He knows your name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Can you imagine that? God knows the amount of hairs on your head. So what is that situation that we are going through, that we are faced with, that he doesn't know about? It may seem like a mountain, but he is the mountain mover. He is the miracle worker. He is the way maker. He is the problem solver. It's time to move, people. It's time to move. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop pitying yourself. This is not going to change the situation. What we need to do is to put our trust and our confidence and our hope in the unchanging God, in the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. He said, call upon him in time of trouble and he will deliver us. He will deliver us. It's time to move. I need this to sink in this morning. It's time to move. If you have not, now is the time to make Jesus your Lord. Now is the time to surrender to him like never before. If you are to experience the total goodness of God, God in his totality, you have to surrender yourselves totally to him. You must surrender totally to him. We were singing this morning, your goodness is running after me. It's running after me, but you are not going to experience his fullness if you are not totally surrendered and under the canopy of God. You will keep experiencing the struggles. 
You will keep it. Mind you, we will suffer persecution. Those who live for Christ, we will suffer persecution. But he will come and deliver us in his own time. What we need to do is to stay focused. Be unmovable and keep moving. Don't remain stagnant. Don't remain in the same place all the time. It's time to move. Move to another level. Making the decision to serve God and to totally depend on him because you can't help yourself or you can't change your situation. You can't do it on your own. Like the lepers at the gate of Samaria had a decision to make, we just read. They said if we stay here at the gate, we will die because the famine is in the land. No food is going to come from out of Samaria. If you're in, in um, Watson Waven and there's a famine in Watson Waven and you stay in Watson Waven, you will die. You have to try to get to Trafalgar, to Coptal, to Shufford, to Roseau, so you could get food. So they decide, <laughs> guys, we need to make a decision now. It's time to move. It's time to move. We cannot remain in this place. Let's take a chance and let's go to the camp of our enemies and surrender. And if they have mercy on us and they pity us, we will live because they will not treat us like the enemies. But if they don't, we will die because they will lift their guns and their arrows and their bows at us and we will be dead. But if we stay here in the gate, we will still die. So we have to move. Move, go to the land of our enemies. We may die. We may die because they may have mercy on us and allow us to come in. If we stay at the gate, we will surely die because no food is coming out of Samaria to come to us. So it's time to move. Let's go. People of Wharton Wave and Pentecostal Church, it's time for us to move. It's time for us to move to another level. It's time for us to move higher in God. It's time for us to elevate ourselves spiritually. So they gathered their courage. They were lepers. They gathered their courage and taking a leap of faith. It had to take faith. They moved. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 said, no, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence not seen. They hoped that the enemies would have had mercy on them and they would have gotten food. So they make a leap of faith. They took a faith walk and they said, like Esther, if we perish, we perish, but we are going. They didn't stay where they were. They had a decision to make. There was something within them then that needed to be fed. They were hungry. So that, that, that hunger in them gave them that desire and that passion to move. So they didn't remain in that place where they were, but they took a leap of faith. They put their faith in action. Let's go. Let us move. If we move, we may die. If we stay, we will surely die. Let's move by faith, and let's look at what God will do. It's time for us to take that leap of faith. Brethren, it's time to move. If you stay in this place in your sin, one foot in and one foot out, you will die. If you stay in your sin, if you remain in your sin, with both foot in sin, wallowing and enjoying sin, you will still die. One foot in, you come to church today, you go back in the village, you go back wherever, and you live that same sinful life, at the end, you will die. You are in it all together, you don't come to church, you drink your rum, you party, you live your life, you will die. The time is now. The time is now that we should get serious with God. Take that leap of faith. Both foot in, hands in, head in, and move. Move. Serve God. The times we are living right now is very uncertain. COVID-19 is all over the world causing havoc. So you cannot say, I'll move from Dominica and move to America. Or I'll move to France, or I'll move to England, or I'll move to Pakistan, wherever. 
Okay, I have a US green card. Uh-huh. I have a European green um, um, passport. I will move. 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 Some of us say, when trouble comes to Dominica, I'll get on the flight and I'll move. Nobody can move right now. Nobody can move because everywhere is uncertain. The whole world is in chaos. The whole world is at a standstill. And Jesus Christ is knocking on our door. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Serve him. What, that is what we need to do. Move. Move to another level in Christ. Get more serious with God. Forget about the pleasures of the world. Don't get entangled with the things of the world. But move to another level spiritually. Spend more time in the word. Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time witnessing to people. When you, you may be at home and there's so much time to be on the internet. Research spiritual things that will encourage you. Listen to worship. Listen to the word. There's so much out there that we can listen to, to, to elevate us and to encourage us spiritually. Now is the time to move, to get serious. The, 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 the future is not promised to none of us. Tomorrow is not promised to you, neither me. Now is the time. We have no idea what the future holds, what tomorrow holds. Our port has just opened, Seaport Airport. We don't know what tomorrow holds. It may just have to be shut down again. It's the end time. We are living in the end time. People, we need to move. We need to move. We need to surrender to God and move away from sin. You will die physically, but if you surrender to God, you will live forever spiritually. That's why I'm encouraging us today. It's time to move. It's time to move from where you are. It's time to get serious with God. It's time to move from one level to another. It's time to turn your backs on the things of the world. Because the pleasures of the world, they will last just for a season, just for a while. But God will give eternal life where the pleasures will never end. When you make your heaven your destination, the pleasures will never end. Think on that this morning. It's time to move. We've been in the same location for far too long. It's time to get serious with God. It's time to stop doubting God. It's time to change your location. Change your location. You may not be getting the signal because you are in the wrong location. Change your location so you could be connected to the wireless connection of heaven. Digicel and, and flow cannot do it. We need to get connected to heaven. We need to get the, the satellite from heaven. It's time to move. Time to take the limits of God. Time to surrender to him totally. Time to seek God earnestly. It's time to move soldiers of Christ. It's time to move. It's time to move from where you are. Move to another level. Look how long we have been on Skype for prayer meeting and Bible study. It's time to move. Those of you who have not hooked up, it's time to get hooked in. Because we don't know, we may never be able to come back to normal to have prayer meeting and Bible study in church. It's time to move from where you are. It's time to get serious with the things of God. And I'm closing because that's what I wanted to drive home today. It's time to move. Move from where you are. Take a chance like the lepers. Take a chance. You are more sure being on God's side than to be out in the world. The assurance we have is eternal life. The pleasures of sin, they last for a, reason, for a moment, for a season, for a time. And then after that, what? After that, what next? Judgment. That is what is next. Judgment. And they say it's TV, but it's not no TV. It's heaven or hell. 
where you will burn eternally, but you can choose to live eternally with Christ. Second Kings chapter 7 and verse 2, it says, The officer didn't believe Elisha when he brought the word from the Lord, but he saw it pass, but he didn't eat of it. He didn't eat of it, just like Elijah said. Do you want that to be you? You hear of heaven. You've been hearing of heaven. And Jesus Christ is coming back. Then the Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered, man of God, the man of God, and said, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Don't let that be you this morning. Don't let that be you, that you've been hearing about the kingdom of heaven for, for all your life, and you sit in church for all your life, and then you don't make it to heaven. It's time to move. It's time to make that decision to serve God with all of your heart. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13, it says, Keep watch because you do not know the hour you do not know the day when Christ will return. So make him your Lord today. Today is the day. And as I close, I encourage us this morning to change your location. Move to another level. Move to another level this morning. God is calling us to come closer. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. If you remain far from him, he will not push himself on you. You have to show him that you are willing. Take that step. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you this morning. It's time to move. It's time to change your location. It's time to change your status. Change your status on WhatsApp. Change your status on Facebook, change your status spiritually. Change it. Represent Christ with your status. Whatever the status you may have, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on WhatsApp, whether it's physically, it's time to change your status and represent for the kingdom. God bless you this morning.